And our last guest is um, uh, Brittany uh, Morgan, who is the moderator of our regularly scheduled chat room. And if she would come on up, we can talk about her glaucoma story and give us some insight. There you go. And welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany Morgan, and I'm here to share with you my own experiences with glaucoma. So my glaucoma story is a little different than most. Um, I was actually born with a cataract in my left eye. And at birth, the doctors actually missed the cataract. And so about 12 days later, my parents took me to the doctor because I had developed a minor skin infection on my neck. And they didn't think anything of it. They just expected the doctors to give us some cream and we'd be on our way. However, the doctors decided to perform a full baby checkup on me. And it was at this time that they found the cataract. <clears throat> the next day, my cataract was removed from my left eye. And with it, the natural lens that everyone is born with was removed. An artificial soft lens was placed in my eye instead. The surgery was a really great success. One negative implication from the surgery, though, was irregular uh, pupil misshaping, which I still have today, but it's a small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. After the surgery, my parents thought that the nightmare had been over, but unfortunately, it really had just begun. Patching happened next. Um, after my surgery, I needed to be patched, and since my natural lens had been removed and an artificial lens had been placed in my left eye, I needed to patch my right eye in order to force my left eye to see and really grow stronger. I had to be patched for nine years, four hours a day, which sounds like a very long time, which it was. It was very hard on my parents especially. As an infant, I never wanted to wear an eye patch. It was uncomfortable and irritating. I would often cry and kick and scream and always want to take the patch off. My parents had to constantly watch me and make sure that I didn't take the patch off. They knew it was important for me to wear the patch in order to strengthen my eye. Now, I'm sure taking care of an infant's hard, but when you add patching into the mix, it's a whole other problem, and I think my parents deserve a medal. They're actually here in the audience today, so I'm very fortunate to have them. So thank you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> um, as I grew up, I realized that patching was very hard for me, too. It became difficult to read, complete my homework, play the piano, hang out with my friends, etc. Although the patching did strengthen the vision in my eye, I still have very little binocularity today. But I'm sure that I would have had less binocularity today if it had not been for the patching. Now, here's kind of where my real glaucoma story began. At age seven, I developed glaucoma in my left eye. I discovered that I had glaucoma during a routine visit to the eye doctor. My pressure was in the 40s. My parents now are faced with more troubling news. My eye doctor, Dr. Rick Wilson, decided to perform a trabeculotomy, which is a procedure where a piece of tissue in the drainage angle of the eye is removed, which creates an opening and allows for drainage. The surgery went very well, and it kept my pressure down initially. However, unfortunately, the surgery's success was only temporary, and my pressure began to rise after five months, again into the 40s. When the trabeculotomy was unsuccessful, Dr. Wilson suggested either a trabeculectomy or a tube shunt. My parents, again, were faced with a difficult decision. A trabeculectomy is a very common glaucoma surgery but is often highly effective. However, it's incredibly invasive, and it removes a part of the eye's trabecular meshwork and allows for proper drainage. My parents decided to try the tube shunt surgery instead. A tube shunt was implanted into my left eye to provide an artificial draining site for fluid to exit the eye.
There are many risks associated with this procedure, such as bleeding, infection, loss of vision, and even blindness. The surgery was incredibly successful, though. The tube shunt brought my pressure down, and it stayed down this time permanently. After the surgery, though, I had a thick black stitch across my eye. Oftentimes, people would approach me and tell me that I had a thick eyelash in my eye and would ask me if it hurt or if I wanted help to take it out. I'd quickly laugh it off and say that no, it was a result of a surgery. A few years later, I had the stitch removed. After the surgery, I took two to three different drops about twice a day to keep my pressure low and to ward off infection. Today, I am off all drops. Today, my pressures are stable and in the teens. And I have 20-25 vision in my right eye and about 20-40 vision in my left eye. And I regularly go see Dr. Pro at Wills for routine checkups and to make sure my pressures are stable and that the tube shunt is in a good position and everything is going well. Although I see primarily out of my right eye and I'm pretty dependent on my soft artificial lens that's placed in my eye, I've had a very successful result. And I'm able to read and write and play tennis, drive a car, and I'm even in law school in New York City. I'm very fortunate to have such dedicated parents who are very conscientious in making sure that I used my drops and that I had my eye patched every day, and I owe a lot of my successful result to them. In addition to my friends and family and doctors, I used and continued to use the online glaucoma chat support groups. In 2006, I joined Vivian Werner in hosting and moderating several online chat sessions, and Vivian's in the audience today as well, and you'll be hearing from her at 2 o'clock. I wanted to share my story and experiences with those who were facing something similar to what I went through. I wanted to share all of the challenges and the hardships that my parents and I had to overcome and the successful results that I've had today. I also wanted to increase greater awareness of this disease and encourage more people to get their pressures checked pretty regularly since this disease is often known as a silent killer when it kind of comes at you without many symptoms. Now, the chats function as support networks for patients and family members who have been afflicted or touched in some way by glaucoma. The chats also serve an educational purpose as physicians such as Dr. Pro and Dr. Mantravati, among others, offer their free time to answer questions and to provide medical information. And the chats are the first and third Wednesdays of every month, so you should definitely come and check them out if you haven't already. And my story is available to read online at the website. And I'm also available to answer any questions, whether it's medical related or support based. And you can email me at brittanyamorgan19 at gmail.com. And I'd actually be happy to answer any questions if you have some now. Thank you. <laughs>